Hello, my name is Thomas Bolander. I'm a professor at DTU Compute, Technical University of Denmark. Today we are in one of our many labs. In this lab we are doing research on human-robot interaction and how to make robots socially intelligent. What we are going to show is a robot passing a so-called Sally Ann test. This is a test that was originally developed to test the social intelligence of humans and the ability of humans to take the perspective of others. So let's go and have a look at the robotic setup. I'm now going to introduce the two individuals that are going to help with uh, the test. Hi, my name is Lasse and I'm a graduate student here at Technical University of Denmark. Hello, I am the robot. My name is R2DTU. I work as a research robot at DTU Compute. The researchers try to teach me how to become socially intelligent. So now the robot is keeping track of this setting. We have the numbered boxes, we have the colored cubes, and we have Les and I. So the robot is observing these uh, individuals and objects and what happens. So for instance, we can take the cubes and put them into the boxes. And since both Les and I are present and we both observe the scene, the robot will know that both of us know where the colored cubes are. But that might change if Les leaves the scenario. So now that Les is away, I can try to make changes to the state of the scenario. For instance, I can take the red cube from box one and I can put it into box two. Now, in order to pass a Sally Ann test, the robot has to be able to both know where the red cube is, but also know where Lasse believes the red cube to be. So I can try to ask the robot, R2DTU, where is the red cube? The red cube is in box two. R2DTU, where does Lasse believe the red cube to be? Lasse believes that the red cube is in box one. So actually, it manages to pass the test, showing that it can both represent the real state of affairs that the cube is in box two, but also the fact that Lasse has a false belief, namely that it is still in box one where he originally put it. So now we can invite Lasse back into the room in order to show how the robot can use its ability to take the perspective of Lasse in order to be helpful when Lasse wants to solve a given task. Hello, Lazif. Welcome back. Hi. So what are you up to? So I have come to fetch the blue cube. Ah, okay. Also, I need the red cube. If you are looking for the red cube, it is now in box two. So when Laz is reaching out for the blue cube, the robot keeps quiet, there's no reason to help him because he knows where the blue cube is. But when he's reaching out for the red cube, he has a false belief about where it is, so it makes sense for the robot to inform him so that he knows where to look. In other words, the robot knows when and how to be helpful. We have given the robot the ability to take the perspective of humans. Such an ability is, for instance, crucial if we're dreaming about future household robots that can help us out with cooking and cleaning and to find the stuff we've lost. Of course, in such settings, the robot needs to know when and how to be helpful. So the ability to take others' perspective that we implemented on the robot is a crucial step towards general social intelligence. However, it's still quite far from anything that even remotely resembles human-level social intelligence. Thank you for listening. See you in the future.